I have seen many, many memorable moments on football grounds. Not many would beat this. They beat Crooktown and Consett. They beat Bishop Auckland and Burscuff. They beat Chesterfield and Enfield. They beat Stoke City. It's taken them such a long, long time to get here. But my word, they're going to remember this night. It all belongs to the men in green and white. They have lost, but they've lost with honour. And they've made so many friends, they're going to remember it forever. Well done, Blythe Spartan. It was a northeast occasion and a national event centred upon the tone of Blythe in general and Spartans in particular. A, a Wembley final would have been fantastic, but I don't think it could have been better than that. In front of 40,000 of your own people, it was just unbelievable. Peter Jones, the commentator, George Adams, the politician, and Tommy Dixon, the part-time footballer, all recalling what it was like to be part of history on Monday, the 27th of February, 1978, the night Wembley came to St James's Park. The deafening noise that night was a world away from the hushed silence in which the tie had begun. Number three, Newcastle United for Wrexham. Number two against Stoke City or Blythe Spartans. Number five, Middlesbrough. Number 14. Blythe, of course, would have preferred a match against Newcastle United as their reward for beating Stoke City in the fourth round, but the Magpies were beaten 4-1 by the third division Welshman, and so the two giant killers of the season were destined to meet at the racecourse ground on the coldest day of the year. The 8,000 fans who travelled that Saturday were confident that the spirit and skill which had beaten Stoke City of Division 2 would ensure that Blythe were the first non-league team ever to reach the quarter-finals of the FA Cup. I think a draw or a win a day for Blythe. Yeah. If they can hold them at half-time, I think they've got a good chance. They make history, these lads. <laughs> With the game only 12 minutes old, it actually began to look as if that prediction might come true. The Wrexham right-back Alan Hill had attempted an impossible back pass. Terry Johnson, ever awake to the half-chance, slipped it neatly past the goalkeeper Di Davis and the dream looked less impossible now. <laughs> Wrexham, uncertain from the start because for once they were not the underdogs, became even more tense. And as their forwards edged nearer desperation with every Blythe clearance, the Spartans' defence began to look impregnable. What do you think of the situation so far? Champion. <laughs> the next hour and a quarter kept everyone on edge. Again and again on a deeply frozen pitch, the Wrexham forwards surged. Again and again, the Blythe defence repulsed them. With just one minute to go, the crowd was daring to believe that the Spartans' fairy tale would continue. But then, fate and the referee took a hand. The referee gives a corner, Waterson protesting about that. Cartwright takes the corner, high into the box, up goes Clark and punches it clear for another corner. The surface of the pitch has been very treacherous. He hasn't made any mistakes, any costly ones at that, and he doesn't at this time as the ball comes across from the corner, gathers it very cleanly indeed. But the, <laughs> the referee is called play back and the corner will be taken again. That corner flag still giving trouble. It keeps falling over at the wrong moment. I think it must have fallen over when Cartwright took the corner. So, for the third time, Cartwright prepares to take a corner with time up on my watch. High again, into the goal mouth, up goes Roberts, and it's in! Wrexham have equalised! Uh, I think it was a diabolical decision by the referee. We're really annoyed with the decision, um, because it was never a corner in the first place. Tommy Dicker played it off Shinton, and Shinton got the corner. That's, that's a bit that's not on everybody. Well, no amount of discussion would change the result, though. What was needed instead was positive thinking. Keith Houghton had his spirits lifted by the communion he'd felt with the spectators. The supporters out there today were absolutely fantastic. You can see for yourself, they were just absolutely brilliant. Uh, I could, words cannot express what, what we felt like on the pitch out there. All our eyes were the same. Before the game, after the game, and even after they scored, the lift were, wasn't for them. You know, I think our legs could have just uh, could have faded.
In the dressing room, as usual, it was left to Jack Marks, the coach, to restore morale with a song and a chant. Spirits rose even higher when Bly Spartan saw the usual match of the day signature tune on television replaced by Victory Doodah and the chant you've just heard. One that nobody wanted to listen to all those games ago in September 1977. But now the team had managed a draw against league opposition currently riding high in cup and league and suddenly everybody wanted to know everything there was to know about the insurance salesman, the miner, the policeman and the rest who played football for the joy of it. But could such publicity harm men not used to it? Brian Slane, the Spartans' manager, certainly didn't think so. No, they love it. You know, they want some more. <laughs> they want more. Uh, they're enjoying every minute of it. You know, and uh, I just hope it's soaking into them that this is a one-in-a-lifetime job. It's 29 years, you know, since it's happened. And uh, I just hope that everybody appreciates just what's happening to them. The publicity continued as the North East waited for the replay at St James's Park, scheduled for the following Wednesday. There was disappointment in store, however. We've just heard that the Blythe Spartans Wrexham Cup replay, due to be played at St James's Park, Newcastle tomorrow, is now definitely off. After inspecting the pitch this afternoon, referee Alan Saunders declared it unfit. It's now planned to stage the match next Monday. By way of consolation, as Blythe waited for the off, the name of Spartans had one more historic journey to make. The first non-league name ever to enter the hat for the sixth round of the Cup. Number one, Millwall. Number two. Against Bristol Rovers or Ipswich Town. Number four. Wrexham or Blythe Spartans. Number three. Against Arsenal. Arsenal, at home, what a prize. But there was still a major battle to come. And it was of Wrexham that the players were thinking as they boarded the team bus that memorable Monday evening. Oh, we'll get there, mate. Close the door quick. <laughs> As Spartans left their hometown by Plessy Road, families came to their front doors to wave the team off. Cars and buses displaying green and white rosettes hooted encouragement. The team bus even had to make a detour on its way to the ground, so heavy was the traffic from southeast Northumberland into the city. We're just going out there tonight to absorb it and enjoy the atmosphere and, you know, have a good time. Uh, because whatever people say, you know, we've created history this season, and when you've been a part of history, that can't be too bad, can it? Jack Marks about to lead the players off the bus, clutching his bottle of Speed Oil, a Scottish liquid used to fortify the team before the kickoff. Singing and nervously joking, they arrived at St James's Park, where they began to get the first indications of what a night this was going to be. Green and white was everywhere, in banners, scarves, rosettes and hats. Queues stood hundreds deep for every single turnstile. People who'd never been to a match before had come along, drawn by the power of the dream. Once inside the dressing room, however, you couldn't hear the crowd. Reports said there were still thousands deep waiting to get in outside, despite a heavy shower of rain just before the kickoff. A final word from the manager, Brian Slane, and the team was almost ready for the off. Just do your best. Go out, do your best and everybody will be proud of you. And all I can say is once again, bloody enjoy it because you deserve this. A last charge from the bottle of speed oil and it was down into the tunnel and up into the unknown. Had the crowd lived up to expectation? The team needn't have worried. Tyneside had done them proud. There wasn't a single solitary place to be had. St James's Park was eventually closed with 10,000 still locked outside. Every corner of the ground rippled and heaved with green and white. No one could believe it, yet everyone who was there that magic night could feel it. The biggest crowd for years at St James's Park come to see a third division team play a bunch of part-timers who that very morning had been down the pit or at the office or the workshop. But what they'd also come for was a taste of history.
And then, just eight minutes into the game, we began to sense that it was not to be. Roberts, firm header, picked up by Dixon. But it's left once more to Cartwright, such a good player Cartwright, that's a good looking through ball too, if Thomas can get hold of it he can, a couple of yards in from this near touchline, danger here for Bly, turns the ball across, it's a good looking ball, Ooh, that was just over the top, and the referee's given, I think the referee is given a penalty, he has in fact, the referee is given a penalty for Exum, so with just over eight minutes gone here tonight, a little drama, we have got a penalty, and it could well be, I think, Bobby Shinton who take the penalty for Wrexham. Dixie McNeil seemed to be pushed there. The referee, Mr. Gray of Great Yarmouth, had no doubts at all. So booze all round the St. James's Park ground. They could cook this opening goal from the penalty spot. Is it going to be Bobby Shinton or is it going to be Graham Whittle? It's going to be Graham Whittle. So then, perhaps the fate of Wrexham is now in the hands and indeed the foot of Graham Whittle. Graham Whittle runs up and he hits it, smack in the back of the net. And Graham Whittle to booze all round the ground that will not disturb him or Wrexham one jot because with nine minutes gone, Wrexham of the third division have taken the lead through a penalty. Graham Whittle scores his second goal of the season, footballer of the year he was last season for Wrexham. I'm sure at the moment Wrexham feel he's footballer of the night. Peter Jones describing the beginning of the end of a dream. And worse was to come. Guthrie then with a free kick again for Blind Spartan, high inside the Wrexham area. It's cleared by Wrexham untidily but effectively. And there's little Mike Thomas inside the centre circle. Plays a good-looking ball out, looking for Bobby Shinton on the far side. Has he found him? He has found him. A high ball across the area. There's danger here for Blythe Spartan. Oh, a tremendous goal! Hit first time on this near side. I think it was Dixie McNeil. Because there's a great crowd of players there. But that was a first-time effort coming in from this near side. A good bit of running by Mike Thomas. And there with the Blythe Spartan defence absolutely exposed and caught. There was nothing they could do about that one. It was a first-time left-foot shot that really left the goalkeeper scrambling. So Dixon McNeil has done it. He scored in every round. He equalised in the last minute in the first match at Wrexham. And it's another Dixie melody for Wrexham. He scored the second goal. And now, with some 27 minutes gone, I would think it looks as if it's going to be Wrexham's night. And I think it looks as if it's going to be Wrexham in the quarterfinals against very brave Blyce Barton. A second body blow to Blythe and to their fans. But still they played, still they roared. Though deep inside, some 40,000 people began to wonder, as the seconds ticked away, whether the dream had finally come to an end. Would it now be the massacre the cynics had predicted? They ought to have known Blythe better. Far from being finished, they were spurred on to playing their best football of the run. But still the Welshman held out. Ten minutes from the end, most fans would have settled for a consolation goal. Still the cheers then for Blythe, although they're two down. Again, Davis has to come off his line and fist the ball away. It's on the edge of the area. Whittle's down on his knees almost. Ball breaks once more. Chance for Blythe. And it's there. Blythe Spartan have scored a goal. And it's going to be, I think, Terry Johnson who's got it. Tremendous goal. They've worked so hard for this. There was confusion in the mud for a moment. The ball broke loose. And just for a second, it hung tantalizingly there. The Wrexham players waited for a moment, and that waiting was fatal. And the ball went zooming in the back of the net from Terry Johnson, one of the players who used to play here at St. James's Park. It's his fourth cup goal of the season. It's the man who scored in the first match at Wrexham. Now then, we have got seven and a half minutes to go here, and maybe Blythe are not going to lose that impossible dream after all. They are still, though, 2 1 down and Wrexham still have the experience, but suddenly Terry Johnson has given him a little hope. Remembering the miracle at Stoke, fans who only a minute earlier only wanted a consolation goal now bade for the equaliser. Sadly, it never came. Blythe Spartans simply ran out of time. They could never have run out of heart. Their legs might have found it agonising to make their lap of honour at the end, but if they'd been asked to play another hour, they'd have found the strength somewhere, perhaps in the voices of their fans. And Wrexham have done it. Wrexham have got through to the quarterfinals, but just listen to St James's Park, which rises to one side, Bly Spartan. There hasn't been a noise like this at St James's Park for so long. They're applauding for Ron Scott, the engineer, and Tom Dixon, the draftsman, 
and Keith Houghton who plays for the British police. You won't have heard of those names before, I've no doubt, unless you come from this part of the world. The prize goes to Wrexham, perhaps deservedly on the night, but the passion and all the emotion goes to the men standing now in the middle of St James's Park. They raise their arms in their green and white mud bespattered jerseys and they are now going to do a lap of honour and why not? Because while Wrexham have done it, the Welshmen are into the quarter-finals. They go off the field almost anonymously and the men running round this very famous stadium are the men from Blythe Spartan. Ron Guthrie, once who played here for Newcastle and David Clark, the goalkeeper and Terry Johnson who scored the goal, he once wore the black and white of Newcastle and this is what the crowd here think of their heroes because they are, they've got so far started back in September, well just listen this is what Geordie Land thinks of their heroes, the Spartans I have seen many, many memorable moments on football grounds not many would beat this. They beat Crooktown and Consett. They beat Bishop Auckland and Burscough. They beat Chesterfield and Enfield. They beat Stoke City. It's taken them such a long, long time to get here. But my word, they're going to remember this night. It all belongs to the men in green and white. They have lost, but they've lost with honour. And they've made so many friends, they're going to remember it forever. Well done, Blythe Spartan. Well, I'm here actually in the dressing with uh, Jack Marks with me. Your eyes look a bit red, you must be very upset. Yeah, I've had a few tears there. It's the only second time in my life I've cried. Once in the semi final the Amateur Cup. And, you know, it's hard to, to, to achieve what we've achieved and to go out in situations like this, you know. I think they're about to open some champagne actually to celebrate what is uh, very much uh, deserved, I think. Oops, watch out. Any second now. <laughs> That missed me by about an inch, so uh, as you'll see, the lad's not totally downhearted, far from it, why should they be? Uh, at the moment, absolutely lost to sight, though, by a barrage of pressmen and cameramen who are taking photographs of them. The green and white strips looking uh, decidedly black at the moment. Uh, obviously, they've been, uh, they've been in a game, as they promised they would, they would said they'd let the North East know they'd be in the game in the end. In fact, uh, Rob Carney here with me. Rob, it must be one of the best games you played in the Cup, wasn't it? Yes, yeah, which time I played something like decent. I've been playing like a little rubbish, you know. No, I've been playing well. Yeah, let's run go through yeah, it. Yeah, he's been playing well, he's just a bit more so. so. Broken hard on me, I yeah. really disappointed. Especially when he tried so hard, yeah. and uh, we just showed, showed our character again. We came back from two 0 down. We came back from the dead. We scored a great goal. We're still, we're still a great team. Yeah. I think I agree with that. Yeah. How about it, Ron? You think they? Uh, well, a little me. bottle of champagne goes there. Well, I think, uh, I think the team tonight was brilliant. I think that must be ranked as the best display of a non-league team ever. Because being, being two down, as Robbie says, came back the second half. We, I think we're the best team in the last hour. Yes, I thought all, all of them last night, you know, just say after, after they'd scored yeah. their two goals. Well, it wasn't only hard, I think we played some great football now, knocking the ball around the park, and uh, I just thought we could do that and please the fans for the rest of the season. Terry Johnson just walked in here, how, how are you feeling now, Terry? Sick, bloody rough again, that's cost for the game. What, you, you're a bit upset because of the uh, What a penalty, that wasn't a penalty, was it? Just started nice, just seemed to be against all the time. Do you feel I just, I'm sick, can I believe it? Yeah. Played so well, didn't I? Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, I thought you all played particularly well in the second half, and you know, the first uh, hour or so. Even their players, you know, after the game, they were, you know, they said we had enough of the game to win, but uh, that's the way it goes, isn't it? Well, they're about to give us one of their songs, I think, so stand by for the Blythe Spartans chorus.